There's another type of slavery that we can't even escape. Social pressure. Society. What society tells you, and I'm going to speak to the sisters about this, Akhawat. If I were to ask you what makes you feel pretty, many of our definitions would be not the definitions according to the Qur'an and Sunnah. Because according to the Qur'an and Sunnah, beauty is holistic. We don't say, does he have a nice arm? Does he have a nice e ear? Does he have a nice eyes? We don't reduce people to single parts. We see them holistically. That's why our deen is a deen of oneness. That's why we see the inner aspects of beauty and the outer aspects of beauty and it's all together. But, if I were to ask you, you probably give me a reductionist view on beauty, meaning, oh, if I have nice eyes or if I have nice fingers, for example. This attitude itself has not come from your fitra and it hasn't come from the deen. It's come from advertisements like L'Oreal because I'm worth it. Yeah? Isn't it? We see this all the time and it permeates our society and it develops something called the social norm. The social norm. Let me give you an example. I used to be an international project manager. I used to work for the government many years ago. And I was a bit of a loud mouth, okay? This is why I talk now. Yeah? <laughs> and basically, I, we had a PA, a personal assistant, and she was wearing high heels, fair enough. And I'm not judging her, I just want to give you a reality of the example I'm trying to show. She was in high heels and what I noticed was she had like two plasters over her heel and it was slightly bleeding. And I asked her the question, what's wrong with you? Are you really comfortable in those? Yes. It makes me feel better about myself. I was like, are you sure? Are you really sure? Because you could, if you ask your feet that question, they'll testify against you. <laughs> so why do you think that should make you feel better about yourself? Because it makes me look good. Okay, good. Why does it make you look good and by whose definition? Is it really yours? And then I made her think, and this is the power of questioning. Wallahi, dawa is just about questioning. The Quran gives you questions. And in themselves, do they not see? Do they not reflect within themselves? Have you not seen the camel and how it was created? Questions, questions. Allah doesn't always give you answers. He's giving you these questions to direct you through this madness of life. To come to a conclusion that Allah is one and that He should be worshipped. So use questioning as well. Use the power of the Quran. So when you give them the tools of questioning, they're like, you know what? And then she took her shoes off. Because she understands this is not really me. It's not in line with my fitrah. It's a socialization. It's been as a result of the media. And you know why human beings are social animals? I did psychology at university and one of the reasons are that human beings by their very nature, they want certainty. They want certainty. They want to feel certain. They want to have yakin. If they don't feel certain about something, including their own beauty, they go to society. Because it's like, almost like th the most powerful thing around them. Because it's a consensus, it's the masses. And they, they will adopt what the society says. This is why, uh, brothers, how many of you have daughters? Put your hand up. May Allah bless your daughters, many of you. Let me give you some advice. Make sure from a very young age, your daughter feels she's intelligent. Your daughter feels she's beautiful. Your daughter feels she's beautiful outside and inside. Because if you don't, as a father, I know it's very hard because you're from the Asian subcontinent, where it's like love and being soft and nice is not part of the culture. Get over it. This is your jihad and nafs. Because the sunnah is like this. The Prophet used to kiss his grandchildren. He used to have mercy on them. He used to say, Ya Allah, I love so and so, so I love so and so. So at the end of the day, we have to break through this. It's not just good wearing beards, having long robes, and looking the part. But if our hearts are messed up, what is the point? Because even goats have beards. It's dead protein, isn't it? And the reason we get reward because of the obedience, of the love of, 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 of the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if inside it's not there, and this is why many of our youth are, are, are astray because it's the parenting. Wallahi the most important thing. So make your daughters feel pretty, make them feel intelligent. You know why? Because if they're uncertain about themselves, where are they going to go? To the social norm. It's a psychological process. It's very simple. And it, there's two processes for this. It's called informational social influence and normative social influence. And you don't have to know the technicalities in the academia. The point is, it's almost an established fact, society counts. This is why in the Sunnah, the Prophet would go to the influentials for the da'wah. Because the tribesmen would influence their people.
do you see the social effect? So make sure our daughters and even our brothers they feel confident with themselves, they don't have low self-esteem. I travel the whole world, brothers and sisters. And what I see from our youth, low self-esteem, no confidence, no ability to talk, no ability to say something good about the deen, have an inferiority complex. And it's not their fault, it's not the deen's fault, it's the parents. Wallahi, it's the parents. And we need to fix up all of your future parents. So we need to instill this confidence from the deen inside them. So they could be people who go out there and they are people of Tawheed. Because Tawheed, what does it do? It should make you think you could take over the world. That you could move mountains by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because this is real Tawheed. You know, we always think, you know, Uluhiyya, Rububiyya, Asma wa Sifat, all the categories of Tawheed. Yes, this is academia. This is academia. But what does it really mean? What do we say about Allah sometimes? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no true power apart from the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is true, here, not here, here. If it's true, then it should change our whole lives. We should never have an inferiority complex anymore. And we should believe that we could move mountains. Why? Because behind everything is the will and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When things happen, it's because of His will and because of His qudra, because of His power. Not because of Joe Bloggs, the Zionist, media, Sky News, this, that, the other, the government, oh, I'm a victim. When did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi act like a victim? Never. Because they knew this basic principle of Tawheed. Nothing happens except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalas. This is why the Sahaba, they had nothing. They didn't have the iPads, the iPhones. They didn't have computer systems, no technology, effective weaponry. They just had the Quran and Sunnah. They had Tawheed in their hearts. And there were a bunch of villages equivalent in a contemporary sense. And they arose and they took over the world and spread the peace and justice of Islam. What do you think that was? Because they had great weaponry, they had interballistic missiles, they had nuclear weaponry, they had diplomacy. You think they had that stuff? They used to eat lizards. What are you talking about? It's because they knew Allah now. They knew Allah and when they saw creation, they never said creation has intrinsic power. Meaning that this piece of creation with this human being or an obstacle, that has the power to change my destiny. Then you know. It's Allah Azza wa Jal. And since they didn't know the will of Allah, only Allah knows the will of Allah, then that gave them an infinite possibility. This is the empowerment of Tawheed.